Hi there and welcome again to The Tracker here on City TV. We're going all the way to Sweden to talk to one of Ghana's uh, German-born uh, players out there. He plays his football for um, HBK or Halmstad's BK in the Swedish top flight. Phil Ofosu Aye is our guest on The Tracker today. He's played with the Black Stars just once. Um, those of you who follow your Black Stars very well probably might remember him. It was in that Ghana versus Canada game. I believe that game was played in the Washington, D.C. Ever since, he's uh, been all over the place for a minute. He's gone to Wolves. Uh, he's gone uh, to different clubs. And these days, he plays uh, for Sweden uh, or for BMK, uh, HBK in Sweden. So we'll get to him in a bit. Let's take a quick break here uh, on the tracker. When we come back, we'll find out what he's been up to and uh, exactly what his journey has been like. Stay with us here on the tracker. We'll be right back. Hi and welcome back to the Chaka here on City TV. Like I did say, we are going all the way to Sweden. HBK or Halmstad BK is where we stop at. And Phil Ofosu Aye is our guest on the show for today. Um, we'll, be, we'll be talking a lot about what he's been up to, um, what it means to have a Ghanaian father and a German mother, uh, that dilemma, what, what it takes to actually go through a nationality switch because there's a lot of that happening right now he's just the right person to speak to us so let's get to phil and let's get this conversation uh going phil it's good to have you on the tracker what have you been up to hi hey, hey, hey. thanks for having me um i hope you guys are doing well um well today i uh, had a training session in the morning and we plan tomorrow again plan on monday against bp from stockholm at home um i hope we can continue uh our yeah impressive series of wins um we're doing good so far i'm feeling good i'm playing i'm feeling good so yeah it's all good so far thank you hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll get to what's been going on at hbk uh, as the conversation progresses but let's let's go right back to the beginning right and talk to me a bit about your your childhood obviously um, you you benefit from the best of both worlds. You have a Ghanaian father and a German mother. Talk to me a bit about that. Uh, you were born in Moers, Germany. I don't know if I got that pronunciation right, but what was that like um, when you were born, uh, being born to a German father or a Ghanaian father and a German mother? Talk to me about that. What was that like? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, you're right. I was born in Moers in uh, 91. Um, um, grew up in Wilhelmshaven. That's in the north of uh, Germany, about well, two hours from Hamburg. Um, yeah, as you said, my mom is German, my dad's from Ghana, uh, from Kumasi. Um, well, I um, was raised in Wilhelmshaven, uh, started playing football when I was five, um, just went to school. Five? Just as five, yeah. When I was five, I was starting playing football. Um, yeah, was going to school. School started when I was seven until I was 18. Yeah, uh, with 18, I finished school. And yeah, after I started playing professional football, um, started off in the local club, fourth division in uh, Germany. That was actually also my hometown. And from there, I moved on to the third division in Germany. Uh, stayed for three years in the third division after I moved to the second division another three years and then uh, I took the step to England uh, unfortunately I had a lot of, in a lot of injuries uh, couldn't manage mm. to play then also um, I um, uh, was without any club for six months before I moved to Sweden um, first match in the season I had another heavy injury, an ACL. I lost another year. And yeah, hopefully this year will be better. Um, but in the meantime, I also had some positive things. Uh, I have a wife also from, from Ghana, um, Swiss Ghanaian. 
and uh, two kids, two boys. So yeah, I'm I'm fine. I'm 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 really happy. Mm. Now I just try to get uh, football in order too. But my private life is 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 beautiful. I'm very happy, very thankful, mm. and uh, yeah, let, that, let, that's let that's me, basically it. Let me, let me take you back a bit because you are skipping a lot of the the juicy details in between. <laughs> now to to take you back to even age five, right? Um, where did you develop the passion of playing soccer from, or the passion for playing soccer? Because age five is very early for most people, even even for people who dream of going to the academy. Being at the age of five years and actually starting to play football is, is very early. Where did the influence, first of all, come from? And in Germany, if you start playing football at age five, where exactly do you go or where exactly do five-year-olds go to play football? Ah, okay. Um, well, I, I always loved to watch football even when I was young. I was just watching football with my parents, uh, with, uh, with the family. Also, I grew up in a neighborhood where the kids, especially the older kids, always played football and uh, we just joined. And um, by the age of five, you always have like groups of young kids who play football. It's it's more or less just uh, once or twice a week where the parents just meet and the, the kids uh, are mostly playing indoor soccer. And um, it's just more entertainment for the kids. There are no competitions or something like that. So you, you're basically just playing around a bit with the ball. And um, from there on, I think by the age of seven, I think, you start having a, a normal like league where all clubs, I think then it's under, under eight. Under eight, yeah, that's when you're playing for, for a club for a local club and then you have just games uh, within the within the city where you just just play and um yeah it's it's quite fun because you make a lot of friends you 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 develop you have training you um also it's good for the social skills it's um it's actually really really nice and from there on you start um, yeah, developing the the passion actually, and um, yeah, I I just kept going because it was so fun. Um, I, I I wasn't aiming to to be a professional football player. It was just for me fun to play, and yeah, that's basically it. Most of my friends also were in the club. We also played for the for the same club, um, and yeah, we we just kept going. We had fun. We we. I played always football after school, you know, just somewhere uh, next next to our neighborhood. There was always uh, a pitch where all the kids from the neighborhood were meeting and playing football. Mm. And, you know, the generation 20, 30 years ago, there were no phones, no, uh, no, you know, all the stuff the kids nowadays you think We just uh, took the ball, <laughs> went out and just yeah. had fun and, and played football. So this is actually where we all found our passion and mm. um, unfortunately i'm the only one who made it to a professional football player the wow. rest is still playing but not on a professional level wow yeah. just slow down for me a little again there and are, are you trying to tell me that so right from the get-go your parents have always been supportive of your um attempts to play football i mean you yourself said that you started out just trying to have fun at, at what point did let's say scouts or anybody see you and say this kid needs to be in an academy or this kid needs to go somewhere where he can make a serious career out of his talent um i think that started by the age of oh, 12 12 or 13 by the age of 12 or 13 um you start having like tournaments where like all all players or the, all the best players from the team are meeting and then you have like a tournament and then some scouts are coming and they have kind of an association where like all the best players of a region uh, from the same age are playing then they pick the best players and um, then you start playing against each other and then I got a call from the best club from our town. They always try to get in the best players. They also play in the highest league. And um, 
I, wa I wasn't ready yet because I more enjoyed to play with my friends in my, my local club. Mm -hmm. So I, I moved there or I, I, I moved to the club when I was, I think, oh, it's tough now, I think uh, 14, 14. Yeah, I was 14. So mm -hmm. by the age of 14, I played in the higher club, uh, better club. We had more training. It was more intense. Um, I think by that time we trained three times three times a, a week mm -hmm. plus one more day with the selection of good players who so had four mm -hmm. training sessions then with the game on the weekend and yeah we we had also a, a good time but you could see it is more intense it's more intense uh, mm. you, you of course you have fun as well but still the coach was wanted to see good performances yeah and now I could see yeah okay this is still what I want because also it was it was fun because you meet better players it's a harder competition I enjoyed that and yeah I just kept up uh working and uh yeah it, it went well it was, uh, mm. it was a good experience yeah I mean I believe at this point when you are in the academy you are meeting players from other good teams and stuff like that in your mind, it's beginning to feel like you're actually going to be a professional, or? Uh, no, no, not really. I mean, the thing is, my city, um, the, the, high, the highest clubs came fourth division, so I never had really the taste of being a big, big professional player. Um, mm. Once I went for a trial to uh, Werder Bremen, um, that's around 100 kilometers. So I went there for a trial, but I didn't make it because I was physically not ready for this. Uh, I think I was fif 15 years old. Yeah. And I could see that I'm, yeah, that I'm physically and maybe mentally not, not there. And um, I went back. I, I could see because I think that was a good experience for me to see that I have to work on many things. Mm. to really make it um yeah better bremen and the youth they played in every like from under 10 till under 18 they played on the highest level and um this is something well that was something i wanted to reach to play on the highest level uh, i never made it to be honest um after uh the under the year uh, under 15 I moved to another club a bit outside of my city. It was like 50 kilometers. Then I played uh, a bit higher and I developed especially my physics. I, I got stronger. I played there for two years. And then um, I was close to make a good step to a better club, but I couldn't deliver at the end of the day. So I uh, went back to my, to my hometown, to the club, uh, went to the second team. And uh, then I played my first year uh, with a big man as a 17-year-old. And then I was quite close to make it to a professional. But still, I was physically not, mm. not there. Um, my, my body developed uh, quite late, I would say. Uh, but because of my technical skills, uh, the coach gave me the chance. I used it. And then I signed my first professional contract by the age of 18. Mm. So uh, it was, um, yeah, it was a good experience. Yeah. Tell me about that. I mean, I always say that people underestimate how hard it is to actually become a professional football player. As, as a family, how, how big was this for you? I mean, after going through the trials, failing some, in some places, not being able to make the cuts in some places, how big a deal was this for you guys as a family? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's quite tough because... As you said, uh, many people, they don't realize how difficult it is to be a professional. On one hand, you have so many um, competitors. I mean, everybody wants to be a professional football player. You know, all the kids, uh, they, they look up to the big players and they want to make it one day. But at the end of the day, there are for every club only 11 players on the pitch. The whole squad maybe has like 25 players. And uh, when you see how many kids are playing football, um, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a long way. It's a tough, mm -hmm. uh, tough way. And um, never underestimate how much uh, 
work you have to put in and you also need luck yeah we have to talk about luck as well because sometimes you need to be at the at the right place mm -hmm. at the right moment and um you have a lot of setbacks a lot of setbacks you have to uh you have to be patient and never lose the hope and especially not the fun of playing football so um it was quite tough for me especially when i was uh 17 18 one year before i made the the deal with my first club um because i could see that there was there were so many things missing like my technical skills uh my body wasn't there uh tactical i was not even close to be a professional but um i'm someone who likes to work hard i'm someone who mm -hmm. who who listens to the coach and tries to tries to bring in everything and um yes um yeah i would i would say it was uh, a really really tough tough way and i'm kind of proud of it because um yeah it's 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 unbelievable tough mm -hmm. it's unbelievable yeah. tough to be honest yeah now you play for quite a number of clubs um where, where where has where have you had your favorite spell if if you would be honest i mean it doesn't even have to be purely on the pitch but where have you grown the most where have you enjoyed being the most in all of your club career um i think it was in braunschweig that was the club 2015 I mean, 2017 yes right this is where i had also my first invitation from the black stars mm -hmm. um just because um, we played there one decent season and the another season was great. We almost promoted for the Bundesliga. Um, the stadium was always packed. Um, it was also a nice city. The city was not too far from my hometown, just two, two and a half hours. Um, yeah, a lot of good memories. Uh, I made friends there. The city was nice. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, as I said, first invitation from the Black Stars. Um, it was just a good team. I could develop quite good. So yeah. it was, uh, yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it was yeah. impressive. It was nice, yeah. D just, just stay with me over there during the Braunschweig time, right? The, I, I know there are quite a number of Ghanaians in the Bundesliga too. Um, just give me a sense of what it tastes like to play in the Bundesliga too. How tough is it? How popular is it how efficient is it as a league running machine it's it's a i think it's a really really good league if you look at the infrastructure uh, the stadiums the training pitches and so on uh, i think it's one of the best i think with the championship in england it's the best league in europe uh, just because you have so many good players there you have a crazy atmosphere i think the average of supporters every match is like I don't know, 20 25000 especially this season has been crazy you see there were a lot of big traditional clubs like i don't know schalke werder bremen hamburg and so on and really really big clubs and by the time i was there we also had a lot of uh big clubs there um it was a great competition actually um mm -hmm. You, you meet a lot of good players. Um, I could advise every every young player if, if there's opportunity to go there um, to to do it um, because just because the infrastructure is so good mm. and um, yeah, it's um, definitely something I'm I'm um, like to look back to because um, yeah, it's just so much fun to play there. Mm. Yeah. Now. You obviously had certain football uh, idols, especially since you said you were watching football basically from age five. Like, who are you trying to model your game after, or who did you admire when you were growing up? Pardon, sorry, I didn't. Uh, hear I'm, I'm saying that you, you obviously said that you watched a lot of football from age five, and I'm, I'm asking yeah. that who are your football idols when you were growing up? Who did you uh, want to be like? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. So my my favorite player was always um, Thierry Henry. Um, I used to be a striker until the age of um, 18. Um, then the coach told me, you have to be a right back. That's your position. 
But when I was young, I always looked up to Thierry Henry. Um, in general, I loved Arsenal. Um, so you're an Arsenal fan team. still? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, still, still. Mm. Um, I mean, nowadays, um, it's more Liverpool because I just what? love the football. You play. switched allegiance? Yeah, because, no, just because, <laughs> no, just because the the era ended. Okay, the theory um, era. Yeah, th that's the one. Because there were so many players I loved. Like, it was Henri, it was Bergkamp, Pires, Jungberg, um, Patrick Vieira. Mm-hmm. Uh, Campo, uh, there were so many good players, and um, the last four, five, six years, Arsenal wasn't the same. Now they found their way back. I'm happy with that. Yeah. I'm happy with the season they played now. But before, it wasn't the same football. See, same with Manchester United. The Manchester United now is not the Manchester United we know from five, six, or maybe ten years ago. Mm -hmm. It's not the same spirit. Um, what I'm looking the most is not it's not really how, how they play like it's more like how the mentality is mm -hmm. and when I see the mentality of some big clubs now it's not the same they they missing out a lot of parts you know um, I'm so that's why I fancy more Liverpool not because they so so successful at the moment it's more because of the the spirit you know this is like a, they have so much energy. This, mm. it's, I love to see that. Mm. Also, it's interesting because they have a German coach and you really can see what he made of the club. Yeah. And uh, it's quite... Yeah. yeah it's talk, talking about coaches, let's talk about your time at Wolves. Now, I'm sure that's a nightmare for you if you remember it because um, they signed you well, over a long time, I think 2017 to 2020, but you never actually really played. Tell me about about, first of all, your relationship with Nuno Espirito Santo? Because I, 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 I picked up that you and him have quite a special relationship. How did that relationship, first of all, start? And how did it eventually end up in you going to Wolves? Well, it was uh, it started good, actually. I had a good feeling. So um, I had the offer from Wolves uh, after this season, uh, 2006 and 2017. So I went there for the medical, and it was all good. Um, I met the coach the first time when we had the training start. Um, unfortunately, I injured myself uh, at the second, yeah, second week of preseason. Um, the coach just told me just to 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 yeah keep working the rehab, just um, stay focused on all this. Mm -hmm. I've been out for like eight months, seven months. Was that played, an ACL uh, injury too? Pardon? Was that an ACL injury too? No, no, that was no ACL injury. I twisted my foot and I needed to have a surgery and they removed the tendon, the oh. perineus tendon that's uh, near the ankle area. So that was actually a big surgery. That was actually, that, that's actually bigger than ACL, to be honest. Wow. Yeah, yeah. And they have never really seen it before. So it was a bit complicated as well. And, um, by that time, uh, I had also a lot of setbacks because something was good. Sometimes it didn't really heal. But yeah, I made it back to the pitch. So I played um, with the twenty ones. Then after seven or eight months, I played three or four games. And uh, I thought I was ready for playing with the first team again. But then the coach told me um, that he's not planning with me anymore. Um, obviously, the first team was doing great. Um, I think they played a fantastic season. I think uh, we promoted with 98 points or something. It was um, unbelievable. Played good football as well. Mm -hmm. But he told me, as well as many other players, that he's not play, uh, planning with them and uh, uh, or with us. And so the club was um, looking for another club for me to send me on loan. And that is actually the, the end of the story, to be honest. Um, football mm. uh, on, on this level is very, very cold, you know. If you don't yep. perform well or if you're injured or something, they, they're not really interested in, yeah, give you the chance. They just, they just put you to the side, you know. I mean, my name wasn't that big or I didn't had so many games on the top, 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 top level that he 
yeah, was thinking maybe, okay, this guy already showed what he is, what he's capable of. It was more like I came with the team. He brought in a lot of Portuguese players. They all performed, but I couldn't. So I was out and that's it. Hmm. That just was, just, that just was hold it. your thoughts there. So we are still talking to Phil Ofosu. I have placed his football for Halmstad BK in Sweden. He's been sharing with us his um, beginnings as far as getting into football is concerned, where he picked up the interest from the first clubs he played with and whatnot. The conversation is about to get a lot more interesting. So do stay with us here on the track. I will be right back. Welcome back to the tracker here on City TV. We are talking to Phil Ofosuaye of um, Ghana and also Halmstad BK. Phil, you were just going through the Wolverhampton one just phase. Now, talk to me about experiencing such a unique injury. I mean, being all excited because you came to Wolves, knowing that it was a, obviously a step up from where you had already played. It didn't happen the way you expected it to. How do you make sense of all of that as a footballer, um, trying to keep your head sane, trying to go through your recovery. How, do you, how did you get through all of that? Well, first it was quite tough for me because it was always a dream for me to play in England. As I told you before, I uh, supported Arsenal back in the days and I followed the English football. So it was quite tough for me to get there finally. And yeah having a big injury after a few weeks. Mm -hmm. um, I was there alone as well because I went there on my own. My family stayed in uh, Germany. Um, <clears throat> so I had to, I had to uh, find my way to stay focused and uh, to never lose, never lose the goal of coming back uh, to the pitch, especially when the doctors told me that um, they were not really sure if they can help me with this kind of injury. Um, wow. But, yeah, but um, I had some good fuses in uh, Wolverhampton. They really worked good, worked good with me. They um, so, so you're put saying, in the work. not to cut you, but you're saying that this injury was actually a career-threatening injury. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Wow. Because they had to remove a whole tendon. And the, the rest of the healthy tendon was or is attached to another tendon. So that's why I'm feeling always quite stiff in my foot, you know. Um, it felt, uh, especially the first year after <clears throat> I was back on a bit, uh, a bit, a bit weird. It mm -hmm. feels a bit weird um, because of the stiffness, especially in the morning. But now, I mean, the surgery was September 2017. Now it's almost five years. No, I don't really feel it. Um, it's a bit stiff, but uh, I can manage it. So I never had any issues with it after it. So, um, yeah, I'm fine. I'm mm. fine. Brilliant. Um, Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, this, but this is the reward after having a good, tough rehab. Yeah. Uh, so over the month um, of rehabbing in, in England, um, I was more, more motivated just to come back stronger. Mm -hmm. And I actually did, but unfortunately, I didn't had the chance to show my my abilities for the club. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a bit frustrating. So after the season, I went for holidays, came back, and um, I started training with the B team. So there was a group of players who, yeah who were out out of the team uh, it was like 10 players and all of them were looking forward to just go to another club to play because we all still had contracts and um yeah so i moved mm. to germany for a year just to get some match practice but um, unfortunately i only managed to play five or six games because another injury came in and um yeah, it was not really successful for me. It's been tough. Um, 
Let's talk about your time at um, Halmstads, right? I'm sure that after you, you'd had your spells with injuries and you had put that behind you, you were looking forward to playing in the new league and just getting your career back on track. What, what informed your decision to go to Sweden, of all places? Uh, I mean, the Swedish league has been pretty big in, in recent times. Some Ghanaians have come through uh, the Swedish league. But what was your motivation to go to Sweden and Halm, Halmstad in particular? Um, so, um, um, that was, last year, no, two, yeah, yeah, I was without the club um, from June 2020 until December. So um, I wasn't training, I wasn't playing. I just tried to to stay fit, to stay healthy. And then I think it was in December, I had a, I had a call from a former teammate in Braunschweig. He's still playing in Heimstadt, uh, Joseph Buffo, he's also Ghanaian. And um, he told me to come on trial and just try it uh, to play here because they just promoted to Alsvenskan, the top, top division. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I was I was fighting with myself because um, I was not really looking forward to playing in uh, Sweden. Um, I was more looking forward to just try it again in Germany or England. But uh, as the COVID situation was also a big, big impact, there were mm -hmm. so many opportunities for me. Um, also, I had a long, long injury history, so um, I had to take this offer. And uh, I went there and I was uh, pretty impressed by the professionalism and everything in Sweden. So uh, I signed a one-year deal here in, the, in Heimstad. And um, yeah, the preseason went quite well. Um, I played all the friendly matches. I played all the cup games. And um, yeah, the first, the first match... After 19 minutes, I injured. I got injured again. That was the ACL, and and that was a massive, massive, massive uh, setback for me because I was feeling good. I was happy to be back finally, uh, <clears throat> to be back finally on the pitch. But um, yeah, another big injury, and um, that was a tough one. But yeah, the motivation playing in Sweden. Um, wasn't so big to be honest at the at the beginning, but when I got here and when I trained with the team and when I saw the league, mm -hmm. I saw the level, uh, which is pretty decent. I was uh, impressed and I was happy to to be here. Mm. Yeah. Let's let's transition the conversation into some more national team stuff. Now, when I was doing some digging, I realized that there was a time where you were given a call up by the junior Ghana team. The I believe under 17 or under 20, um, to come play in the African Youth Championships. And then your team, uh, Willemshaven, didn't allow you to go. Um, <laughs> is that true? Yeah. yeah, that's a funny story, actually. Yeah, it was under 20. Okay, so the African um, Youth Championships. Yes, there was, the, there was a training camp in Kenya. It was, I think, two hours from Nairobi. Um, yeah, because we were in the middle of the season and we were fighting against relegation. I was playing, the coach needed me. <clears throat> but I, I said to myself, I have the opportunity to play for Ghana, for the national team. Mm -hmm. uh, I have to go there. So I, I just left. I just left. Um, I took the flight, didn't tell anyone, and I just left the town came back a week after I had a big, big problem, but the coach still played me after this. So it was the right decision, unfortunately, because I think of problems with my passport because I didn't have the, the Ghanaian passport back then. Mm -hmm. I couldn't play the tournament. I, I'm not sure if the tournament was in South Africa, but, um, yeah, it was a big, big experience for me to be with the under 20s, and uh, I enjoyed to play there. And um, yeah, that was actually my first taste of playing for the national team. team. Do you remember any of your teammates from back in the day? And do you probably connect with any of those guys from from back in that tournament? Oof. Oh, there's the there. Yeah, there's one one player. I think the striker boy. 
Bog G. I'm not. I'm not sure. He used to play in Serbia, I think. I think oh, Ritmo Boateyado. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was with him. Yeah, played for Red Star Belgrade at the time. Yeah, he's from I think '94 or something. I only remember this guy, mm -hmm. but I'm not. I, w I wasn't in, in touch with him, but I, I remember. Yeah, I remember him. Yeah. yeah, because he made it quite far. Yeah, yeah. He definitely, um, he definitely did. Let Let's talk yeah. a bit about this whole nationality switch and stuff like that because it's become very prevalent now that Ghana have qualified for the World Cup. Ghana's trying to get a lot of its foreign-born players who are eligible to come in and boost the quality of the team. Even those who aren't eligible, they're trying possibly if they can switch them up. How, how complicated is it, first of all, to get a nationality switch? I mean, trying to get a Ghanaian passport because you, are, you have Ghanaian, a Ghanaian parent, but you're obviously born in Germany. Talk to me about how that whole process is like. How difficult is it? Um, it's... So for me, it wasn't actually that difficult. Um, so I received the the invitation. My my first invitation was for the friendly match in uh, the United in States, the US in yeah. in Washington. So I think for the for the friendly matches, there is not even a Ghanaian passport required. But then for the next for the next match against Comoro Island. I needed a, a Ghanaian passport, so I just uh, went to Ghana two weeks earlier to fix everything. But because of my Ghanaian roots, that wasn't a big deal, actually. And um, yeah, it was quite quick. Uh, it was 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 not a big deal. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was for me it was clear that when I have the opportunity to play for Ghana, I, I will I will take it one hundred percent, and I will do everything I can to to play. And if it's just um, to get the passport, well, then let's do it. This is what I thought. And yeah. um, there was not, we, we haven't had any trouble or something. Um, get the switch done. Yeah, yeah. That was, mm. uh, that was a quick one. It was all about the passport ID. So you're ready to play. That's okay. it. So it yeah. was a quick one. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about your first experience. So you get your invitation to play for the national team. That's that's a pretty big deal. How how was that for you, like as a person? Yeah, that was um, so. I, I, I was I was excited because um, yeah, I mean, it's it was my first time. Um, so I flew to to the US to to Washington. It was the first time I met all the Ghanaian players you know from the from the tv television like you know you you see them you watch who, them, you follow who, who them. was in there for that friendly who was in there um sorry yeah oh, sorry no you're um, good yeah um was in for the friendly um it was uh so i was first um i shared the room with uh Fata Dauda. okay uh the goalkeeper um Jordan Ayu was there. Uh, Varis was there. Mm -hmm. Bernard Mensa, I think yeah, he's Bernard, in Turkey. Bernard Mensa is in Turkey now. Yeah, yeah. Um, Asamojian came the second time I was there when we played against Comoro Island. So you, you were on the um, bench for the Comoros game? Yeah, I was on the bench both games. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I think that was, uh, was a big, big game and... Uh, First, I thought I underestimated the the quality, but it's really tough to play against those teams. It's so tough. It's so tough. And um, yeah, um, it was a nice experience to meet all the players. And um, yeah, it was interesting. It's really interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's always it's always great to play for your nation. But now, even even more familiar is the fact that Ghana has a a German Ghanaian coach or a Ghanaian German coach, sort of, sort of like you now. Um, Otoado is in charge. Uh, he's at Dortmund. He managed to come in and lead Ghana as an interim coach to the World Cup over two legs against Nigeria. First of all, did you did you watch those games against Nigeria? And what have you or what did you make of Otoado's leadership in that particular um, two-legged spell? Yeah, I watched I watched those games. You know, I have some Ghanaian teammates 
we in total four in the team. Okay. So we watched, we watched, we watched uh, both games. Um, yeah, I think um, it's, I think it's it's good that Otto Ado came to the, came to the, yeah, I see. Okay, it's good that Otto Ado, um, um, yeah, just coached coached the team because I had the feeling that we we were struggling a bit. I mean, obviously we have a lot of good players. Mm -hmm. The quality is there. Yeah. But we we were not managing it to to bring the quality on the pitch. Especially and, um, after the AFCON. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I mean that was a disappointment and um we all knew that. But um you know this is how football is I think every big club or the big nations also I mean I remember Germany when they when they uh I think it was the last World Cup they didn't manage it to make the group stage. Mm -hmm. um, even the big countries are struggling sometimes. I mean, you have that, but you have to, to get stronger to learn. And this is what I think also Ghana did, the mm -hmm. association did. And with the switch of the coaches, um, you could see that um, that it was a bit, a bit better, and, uh, a better spirit on the pitch. And when you win against Nigeria, I mean, it's a big, a big, a big derby. I mean, you can tell better, obviously, um, that uh, yeah, that that the team performed better. Uh, we 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 were a bit more like aggressive, a bit more. We played better, and um, so I'm I'm quite happy that the coach also had an impact on it. Um, maybe he brought in some of the the German mentality. I don't know what he did, but um, it worked. It worked out, and I'm mm -hmm. so happy that the. That the that Ghana is going to the to the World Cup, um, we definitely deserve it. Big football country, and um, I hope we, we will do well. Let's talk about the World Cup itself. I mean, we we, we run up, we run into Uruguay again. They are like an old enemy. There's Portugal <sighs> again uh, in the mix with Ronaldo. We met them, I believe, the last time we were in the World Cup, and then there's um, South Korea in the mix. W what do you make of Ghana's chances in terms of making it out of this group? Because it's a really, really tough one. Yeah, it's it's definitely a tough one. It's definitely a tough one. But, uh, but, tell me what what is easy. I mean, um, at the end of the day, we have to find our team. Uh, we have to find our spirit, and we have to find a way to play good football. And if we do that, I mean, if I look at the players we have, actually, we don't have to hide. We definitely don't have to hide. Um, I followed Portugal, and they were also they were struggling to win against, let's say, uh, not so big teams. So mm -hmm. why 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 shouldn't be why should we be like um, hiding or be be scared of them or any other team, Uruguay or South Korea? I, I don't see there there is uh, yeah, like there's no chance. I, I think we have a. Uh, a big chance of, of playing a good group stage and I think that uh, there are realistic chances to, to make it and um, it's just all about the the um, the preseason uh, the training camps the selection of the players and if we get the right squad we will definitely have good chances to to make it 100 percent now 100%. let's 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 stay with the the black stars a little um Talk to me about the current crop of players. A lot of young players in the team blended with some experience in there. Are there any of the guys in this current team that you follow or that you currently are like a big fan of? Um, I, I followed, um, you know, as a half German, I followed um, Coffee Cherry from uh, Sao Paulo. Mm -hmm. he, uh, he was like my favorite player uh, in the league. I think he's a really, really, really good player, talented. Um, I think yeah, he had some minutes for the national team as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know how you guys over there, you see him, but in Germany, he he did quite well. Um, so I think those kind of players, um, this, those young players, hungry players, are good for the team. 
Um, apart from that, we also have a lot of players with uh, experience. Um, yeah, when we talk about the players, we actually have so many, so many good players, a good yeah. mix of talent and uh, experience and all this uh, players who play for a long time in the top, top divisions. So I, I don't really think that this should be a big issue of um, getting quality. It's more about having a good team in terms of the spirit, in terms of giving everything you have on the pitch in the 90 minutes. Mm. If, you, if you get this together, I'm, I'm quite confident that we will get the good team. Let, yeah. let me talk to you about something interesting. So like I said at the beginning, I, I found out that you have a brother, a younger brother who also plays football. Um, I found out that he's a winger. Now, let's, let's take the two of you, right? Let's not even compare careers or where you've been. If, you, if, if the two of you are on the playground, like pick up football, who is the best, who is the better player? Um, that's a difficult one. I think that um, because me as a defender, mm -hmm. I'm more, you know, defense. I'm more physical. My younger brother is more, um, is, is better with the ball. You know, he's more the one flair, more flamboyant. Chances. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's more great chances, who is uh, technically better. Um, but he never had the chance <clears throat> to play on a, on a professional level. Mm -hmm. He was always trying, also struggling with his body a lot of times. But um, yeah, because I had um, the possibility to train week in week out on a good level of course i have a i have advantage but i'm quite sure and confident that that when he has the opportunity to to train every day with a good team under good circumstances that he will become a good player so let's pray for that mm. so just finally before we go um what's your favorite Ghanaian food um, I yeah I go for jollof. I can eat it every day. Actually, <laughs> that's yeah. good stuff. Good stuff right there. <laughs> I mean, I'm not sure the last time you came to Ghana, but the people of Ghana want to hear from you. Share a message with the people of Ghana. They want to hear from you. The Ghana from <laughs> the the people want to hear from me. Yeah, just 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 give Ghanaians a message. Um, what else for ah. the you have to tell Ghanaians? Ah. Yeah, you guys, um, I hope you're all good. Um, um, yeah, just, i tell you one thing, enjoy the weather. I'm here out in Sweden. It's always freezing cold. Um, um, I love you all. Um, I hope you're all doing well. God bless you all. And I hope I'll see you one day. Hope we see you soon in town as well. Um, it's been absolutely brilliant talking to you. Thank you for sharing uh, your journey with us. Hopefully, uh, some other time we can catch up again. Thanks for having me. See Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. So you had Phil Ofosu Aye there, uh, joining us all the way from his base in Sweden, plays his football for Halmstad's BK in the Swedish top flight there, uh, sharing his time during his clubs, the national team, um, the time where he had to run away from his team to play with the under-20s and all of that. It's been absolutely amazing talking to you. Same time next week on the tracker, we'll be back here with more.